sensitive to people who, because of cultural differences. This meeting is recorded, so your audio and your visual may be used for marketing purposes. Now, I'm going to hand you over to our Toastmaster of the day, who needs no introduction when it comes to being a master of ceremonies. This very year in June, Christian Ramchurin, the distinguished Toastmaster, hosted the VTM Con. Please welcome our Toastmaster of the Eden, Christian Ramchurin. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer, and ladies and gentlemen, and esteemed guests, welcome. Uh, point of order, I did not host it, I co-hosted it, and one of my, my other co-hosts is here in the room. If you can guess who she is, or who she was, type her name in the chat, and the first one who types her name gets a freebie from me. Anyway, let's get this party started. All right, so the theme of the day is your why. My why, our why. Now, Dostoevsky said the following, the mystery of human existence lies not in just staying alive, but in finding something to live for. So my fellow Toastmasters, have you found that thing to live for? If you have, awesome. If you haven't, I hope this session gives you insights and aha moments to get to that answer. Having said that, today we have a packed agenda, and I'm proud to say, and yes, let's give a, hands, a hats off and a big round of applause. Applaud or wave madly for your VP education because she was successful. She helped me to fill in the agenda. Thank you, Madam VP education. Yay. So we have three speeches. We are still waiting for one of the speakers to show up. We have obviously free evaluations. We have something called for our, for the benefit of our guest open feedback hmm, what's that i wonder we'll find out and then we have the most dreaded moment of a tip of a toastmasters meeting for me at least table topics because there's a twist to it and you'll find out soon if you're a first time visitor i'm joking it's just fabulous having said that Let's just dive into this meeting. And first things first, we want to be always on time and we need to manage time. On this note, I'd like to invite the person who's filling the role of timer. He shared with me that he simply loves the idea of a solely online club. And that is why he joined Digital Communicators. He loves the idea of an online advanced club. That's why he's here. And he simply loves the idea of a club dedicated to advanced technical ideas, sophistication and presentation, in his own words, just up his street. So please wave crazily, show me the energy for our timekeeper, Dek Kluski. Over hey! to you, sir. Yes, Dek Kluski, the Sigwish Toastmaster, the owner of an iPhone with the timing on. And Christian, you had three minutes. You only did 2.40. You had time to spare, but why do we time everything? You will never be asked to speak. You will be asked to speak for a certain time. 30 seconds, 20 seconds, a minute, three minutes, 40 minutes, whatever. So it's very, very important for timing. To do that, we use uh, colors in this organization. We use green for the first time. Second time is the middle time, so you're thinking of wrapping up, amber, and then red is when you should really stop. But if you go 30 seconds over, you will get this little bell. 15 seconds more, you will get this bell. And if you go any more than that, you will get the large bell. Nobody goes over time when I'm timekeeper. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Oh my God, Mr. Timekeeper. Those bells reminded me of how cool. primary school. <laughs> and I saw them when I dropped my daughter to her own school. But yes, they do help. Thank you. And let's hope we don't hear the bells tonight. We now move on to the next functionary who's none other than the person who's going to pay attention to how we are going to be using and delivering on our grammar. The grammarian. That 
person joined digital communicators. Why? Because she felt secure in the knowledge that her president was developing something different. And to this end, so far, she has not been disappointed. So please welcome our grammarian for this evening, Toastmaster Colette. Over to you, madam. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I am your grammarian for the evening, and I'll be looking out for some turns of phrases and some nice use of language. What I have chosen is a word of the day that I looked up on Google. Google is great for finding different things, and I absolutely couldn't get over this. One of the five most effective words in public speaking is breakthrough. Now, that's news to me because I've given speeches, I hear speeches, and I very rarely hear the word breakthrough. But it means to describe a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery or development. Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, used that word a lot in his speeches, according to Google. At one of his speeches, he said, we are just at the beginning stages of what will be a truly remarkable breakthrough. This iPhone 7 is a breakthrough in mobile technology. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Madam Grammarian. My fellow Toastmasters, our Grammarian mentioned Steve Jobs. Do you think Steve Jobs had a why? If you think he had a why, type yes in the chat. Let's see the yeses, all the no coming. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So I think we're starting to agree that yes, Steve Jobs, yes, Madam Pam Rowley, he did have a why. So what is our why? Well, the person who didn't sign up for the role of live reporter obviously didn't find the why in taking the role of live reporter. So what we are going to do is look for someone among here. Well, instead of looking, I'm going to give a shout out anyone just jump in and be a live reporter right now just send me a private message while i'm waiting eagerly for your private message i'm going to move on to the next functionary who's none other than our open feedback chair i'm going to call her chair and you'll find out what she's been someone who's been close i'm not going to say to my heart close to my messages over the last six to eight months we've gone through hell and heaven oh hell together she's been my co-host at vtm con 2021 and i think her why in toastmasters is to discover new horizons and just improve herself as a human being so please welcome your open feedback chair pamela benjamin over to you madam my why my why is always to find new horizons and fun things to do. Just like we did at, D at VTM, we were looking for the best speakers and the best projects to work on together. And I am here at Digital Communicators to learn and grow with a lot of other people who want to work on technology skills and public speaking. That's my why. And I'm going to be asking questions after the speakers speak. So be ready. Thank you to a small step, Pamela. And I'm still waiting for that message. I want to be the live reporter, Christian. So where's my live reporter? Going once, going twice, not going thrice, it's going to go later on, but we're going to just jump into the prepared speeches. We have three prepared speeches planned for you. Here's the first one. This gentleman is going to break the ice, not literally break the ice, but he's going to do his first speech at Digital Communicators. He was my evaluator in my last speech, and I'm really looking forward to him breaking the ice with his delivery. Now, he tells me why he joined Digital Communicators. Nick Lacani, the usual suspect, has been his partner in crime. And Nick suggested to him to join, and he liked the international aspect, character of the Advanced Club. 
Digital Communicators is a club of different characters where national boundaries, yeah, they truly vanish. And it gives him the ability to hone his presentation skills. So please welcome for his icebreaker to Smallster Mehusha. And before he, in, he starts his delivery, I'd like to also welcome his evaluator who's there with me here. Toastmaster Prince. Toastmaster Prince is going to evaluate Toastmaster Mehulsha and it's his icebreaker, which means he's going to do a speech in front of the audience. Mehulsha, over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster of the Union and uh, fellow Toastmasters. The soft rays of the morning sun fell onto the face of Raju, a 12-year-old boy dragging himself on the floor in the torn shirt and short. The boy lost his legs when he fell under the train selling the tea at the age of seven. For the next five years, he was dragging himself and begging to survive. His family could not even afford the food. Forget about giving him his life back. In the next two hours, a miracle happened. He got on his feet, called Jaipur feet. Artificial limb, which was made in India for the less than $20 no technological miracle, nothing fancy, but the poor people came back on their feet. The smile, the smile on that little boy was life-changing for me. It was my first experience to give something to someone and change their life forever. I was heading a organization called BBP and uh, it was our first social project in the town called Junagadh, where I come from. And in next eight years, I was lucky to help hundreds of such poor people to put their smile back on their face among all other projects what we did in that time period. This came from the family. My father was very well known for his social activities. It was a small town named Junagar, which was also, which is also very well known for the lions in India. There are only two places where the lion exists, one in Africa and one in India. And in India, only in one place. That is where I come from. It is also well known for Mahatma Gandhi. He just came from the same nearby place. I grew up in the business family. Next 12 years after my graduation, I did my own business. And guess what? One fine morning in a wet, wet, cold morning, KLM flight landed in the Amsterdam airport. KLM. I always thought that it was a Middle Eastern airline because of the symbol. And then I was surprised that it was not Middle Eastern airline, it was a European airline. I came to Netherlands in 1999 and for the next 22 years, I lived there, flourished there. But what I had got in my childhood didn't go away. I still kept link with the charity organizations in Netherlands. I got very highly involved with Rotary and we took a lot of projects outside Netherlands as well. You grow with a value and that value sticks with you. And when you reflect back, you always see the pattern in your life. In 2004, I went to US, my family is in US. And one day my brother actually dragged me 
to a meeting. I didn't know. And then he said, yeah, we are going to Toastmasters meeting. And I was really expecting Toast and Tea. It was not there. Surprise, surprise. I became a Toast. Went back to Netherlands, found a, uh, found a club. It was Amsterdam club. That's where my journey started with Toastmasters. A few of us went to Utrecht, started a new club called Utrecht Toastmasters in 2006. And my journey to the Toastmaster never ended. I came to Netherlands to UK in June. And then, you know, the first thing came in my mind was, where is my family? I started looking for my family and I found the guy called Nick Lakhani with the help of, uh, of, of the governor, uh, Toastmaster area governor, but he dragged me here as well. You reflect back and then you see actually what are the breakthroughs in your life. The moments we change you fundamentally, they never go away. I am 56 now, but still it is the same passion. It is still the same motivation and it is still the same idea and value of the life. Madam Toast, all right. <laughs> Toastmasters. Thank you. Thank you to Smaster Mehu. What an inspiring speech. And I didn't know you were related to my president. That's fantastic. Thank you. And yes, as usual, I missed out some of something. I missed out introducing my speaker number one, but I'm not going to do that with the second speaker who's actually working on something very special to a heart. Before that, the second speaker is none other than, and let me get the name right, Toastmaster Audrey Ying Li Sing Fat for the benefit of the grammarian and my own sake, I'm going to just call her Toastmaster Audrey. She is going to be delivering from the path Innovative Planning, a level five project, which is actually not the P, um, the HPL P Performance Leadership Project, not the first speech, the second speech. Toastmaster already mentioned that she had delivered the first speech a year ago, and she has been working from then since now. And she's looking forward to get feedback on, from everyone on the second speech, which is about how she ran a PR project at a home club for a specific duration. Now, Toastmaster Audrey told me that she joined Digital Communicators to learn to use different digital tools and become a better facilitator. Well, join the club, Audrey. And tonight, Audrey is being evaluated by Toastmaster Vincent. All the best, Vincent. And Toastmaster Audrey, the floor is yours with a speech titled PR Project. PR Project, Toastmaster Audrey, over to you. Are you a leader or a follower? I was a follower who wanted to gain leadership skills. How would you do that? Well, fellow Toastmasters, friends and guests, you learn by doing. So I took the high performance leadership program in Pathways Level 5 to help me develop my leadership skills. Today, I want to share with you the PR project. I, I will break this presentation into two parts. The first one, I'll talk about what I did. And the second one, I will talk about what I've learned from this project. Last year, I was appointed as VPPR for Financial Toastmasters Club. 
It's my home club based in Mauritius. At the beginning, it was overwhelming because everyone has a different expectation of what the role was, what should I do as a PR. So the first thing that I did, I created a PR team. Um, it was composed of members who was willing to help out and prospectus uh, VPPO officers. We were a team of three. And then what I did is that I organized a design thinking session. What is a design thinking session? Well, a design thinking session is an iterative process that teams use to understand users, to challenge assumption, to redefine problems, to create innovative solution, and to prototype and test. So we use the outcome of the session to complement the survey conducted by the VPE to set up our PR strategy for the year. So from that point, we decided to focus on two points. The first one is the digitalization. And the second one is the retention of club members. These two were problems that uh, we faced the previous years and also during the first lockdown in March 2020. We realized that we needed to up our game and be digital. So we needed to use the tool, internet. Toastmaster Bob from the PR team had the role to revamp our old dormant website so that people could reach us. We also use social media uh, like Facebook to be more visible and to attract potential members. If lockdown was a barrier for some people, for us, it was the beginning of a new era. <coughs> we had joint Toastmasters meetings from clubs from all around the world. We had international guests and this was brilliant. Then we wanted to focus on our second point, which was the retention of members. Um, our issue was that we had a lot of new members, yes, but we also had a lot of members who left us or became dormant. So we wanted to, to change this trend. So we organized different activities throughout the year to keep people engaged. We had parties, end of year parties, Christmas parties, we had newspaper, we had newspaper twice um, a year, and we encourage members to work on that. We also had outdoors events, and we also participated, um, help an NGO called uh, Tireyon de Soleil. They are based in Mauritius, and they support young children's education in zone of extreme uh, poverty. And then, Last year, there was a campaign in Mauritius. Uh, we wanted to make Mauritius a dist uh, districted. And one of the requirements that was that we had a minimum number of clubs around the island. One of our members, DTM Bob, was highly in, um, involved and I had the chance to help him to help him with demo meetings, with mentoring new clubs and getting clubs chartered. And you know what? Last month, we, received, we were really happy to receive the Founder Award ribbon. Well, let me tell you another good news is that as from this year, Mauritius joined District 74D. Now, I'll talk about the second part, what I've learned. The first thing that I've learned is 
it's teamwork and leadership style. It's really important. For this project, I used a more collaborative approach because you and your team, you are serving the club. You are doing it in your free time and freely. So if you're too demanding, the team members will quit. And if you're too lenient, the work won't um, be done. So you have to find a balance between teamwork and leadership style. Then the second thing that I've learned is that things don't always go as planned. Again, this year in March 2021, we had to shift to an online to online meetings because Mauritius went back to lockdown. And this, with that, it became more difficult to have new members. And last but not least, I realized that in one year, you can't do everything. You have to prioritize. And this design thinking session at the beginning of a year really helped us to visualize our goal and set our goal. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Audrey. And I got the name right. Thank you for one of you to remind me, hey, what's in the name? There's a lot in the name. <laughs> Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing. And it's always a challenge with membership. But hey, if you are a VP membership, if you're, if you're a club leader, if you join a Toastmasters club, what's your why? Why are you there? Why are you doing? Why not just go and do an HPL project again and improve? Thank you, Audrey, and wish you all the best for the next HPL project that I hope you do at Digital Communicators. We now move on to the third speaker. Now, there's just been an update because our third speaker is not able to show up because of personal reasons, the third speaker as per the agenda. However, because we're digital communicators and we are an advanced club, we are able to get in a third speaker as a replacement. And this lady is coming from a different continent. Uh, she is joining us from Africa. And if I'm not mistaken, she may be in Dubai right now. I do know her closely in terms of Toastmasters relations because I have I collaborated with her for a whole mandate. She was my VP membership at another advanced club. What's her why? Well, her why is, I think, just to be a better human being. And I'm just going to, to dare it here. It's all about being... A better example for her for her child. I believe that's her why. That's a mighty why. Now, uh, Toastmaster Ogale is joining us with a speech from Visionary Communicator Communication Level Two, uh, Visionary Communication Level One, Speech Project Evaluation and Feedback. It's the second speech. Her assigned evaluator for the speech project is none other than Rinku Saha. So please welcome Toastmaster Ogale, uh, Ogale for breaking through. Breaking through, Toastmaster Ogale, over to you. There are times when it seems like the world is crumbling. And many of us have had these kind of experiences all through the pandemic. I've had a few of those, and especially lately. I feel the pain of losses. Today, I lost a friend, a friend of 26 years. And when it happened, I was hit below the belt and wanted to do nothing than coil up and cry. Then I said, if I should find a reason to be somewhere today where I could get lifted by a group of people around the world who are ever so supportive and helpful and encouraging, then I should be with my Toastmasters friend. Maybe 
I will get a breakthrough today. And so I'm here with all of you. I know you're wishing me well. I feel your love. I see you from around the world. I see how devoted and committed you are to one another and to the whole digital experience. So I'm here today. I have no digital tools, but I've brought myself. I have no fancy graphs. I have nothing who's at the point of grief, but who's come online to be with my friends to break through, through how exactly I feel today. It feels empty. It feels not great. It feels painful. We do find ourselves in scenarios like this. What do we do? Friends, I've come to tell you that it's not the end. If you feel that you're down for any reason at all, it's not the end, you can pick yourself up. Friends, I've come to tell you that being together with supportive friends and family, and especially in a scenario where you're free to speak about it, would really help a lot because already I feel better. It takes you away from the throes of sadness and depression and puts you in a scenario where you say, oh, I found a voice. I told my story. I shared my pain because like it is said, the problem shared is then 50% at least solved. I have a part and then you have a part and together we can ride this together. Think about the last time you found yourself feeling sad, really bad, or maybe a tad depressed, worried, or something like that. And think about the person that came to your aid, talking, helping, or just. So it's not the end. This is the point where we come together to seek support. No matter how low you feel you're sinking, and no matter how bleak your situation, there is another day. The fact that we wake up every morning is something to rejoice about. And you know, someone asked once, if you were asked to choose between not waking up, or you know, you say, if I give you $10 million and then you don't wake up tomorrow, what would you choose? May I ask that? I give you $10 million for you not to wake up tomorrow. I like that laughter. What would you choose? Aha, uh -huh. you would want to wake up. So the fact that you woke up today, my friends, means that your day and your waking up and your being alive and being here today is worth more than $10 million. And I want to tell you that you should live every day with that zest and vibe and gratitude that each day is such a gift. Each day you wake up is worth more than $10 million or $100 million, whatever it is for you. And these are the little things that help us break through from day to day, from moment to moment, stepping up to encourage each other and knowing that even when we don't feel digital or we don't feel like doing fancy things, we can be here, be present, make a difference and breakthrough. That's my story for today. Thank you. I am speechless. I don't know what to say, except thank you so much for sharing. It's making me think about why I'm waking up every morning. And yes, it it is a valid question that we should be asking ourselves ourselves thank you to smallster ogale and ladies and gentlemen by the way this was ogale's back pocket speech yes the lesson here is always have a speech ready in your back pocket and she just performed there a person without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder that's a quote from thomas carlyle now are we going to be without rudders or equipped to guide ourselves in the next segment? Well, let's find out because the next one is where I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the show because it's now on to table topics segment.
and to get this party started ah uh, yes he's on screen he's gonna he's on the screen he's waiting for his time how could i forget him mr timer just <laughs> tell us shortly who was within time and we can enjoy your full report at the end of the meeting well i normally do it this way uh to n n nick Lachani couldn't be with us, so Colette stood in. Two minutes she had. She did two minutes 30. Uh, Krishna was introducing the whole show, and he had three minutes. He did two minutes 40. Well, I was the timer with the time of one minute to explain what my role was, and I did one minute exactly. <laughs> Cramarian was Colette, and she had a time of one minute, and she did one minute 34. Five seconds, naughty girl. Pamela Benjamin was uh, doing the open feedback introduction and she had a time of one minute, did 34 seconds. For speech, six minutes. Came in at 6.05 and that was Mehul Shah. The second speech was Audrey, that's the way you pronounce it, Christian, Audrey Ying Sing Lee Fat, and her time was seven minutes, came in at seven minutes and 23 seconds. Oh, golly, Akpo. Akpobome, and I've been, I've been practicing that, Akpobome had a time of seven minutes, came in at five minutes, oh five, and that, Mr. Toastmaster, is your report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Timekeeper, and it's wonderful to know that you're also our second hidden grammarian. All right, so now let's move on to the magical moment of this meeting, and it's going to be run by an amazing lady. Well, she is amazing in my books, at least. Uh, this lady joined Digital Communicators to learn. Ah, no, she didn't join communica Digital Communicators for that reason. I'll skip to her why after she's done with the session. Having said that, please allow me to introduce you none other than to Smallster Antuna Harris to lead us with table topics. Over to you, to Smallster Antonia. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster Christian. Okay. My time has been eaten up, so we're going to have to move fast. I take it you all know what Table Topics is about. So it's impromptu speaking, practicing, being caught on the hop, being asked an awkward question. Some of these questions are easier than others. Our subject tonight is your why. So my questions tonight are a mixture of maths, physics, philosophy, life in general, and one joke. Now, which will you get? I'm going to pick on people and ask you to choose a number between 1 and 13, and that will determine which question you get. But listen up, everyone, because here at Digital Communicators, we do shotgun evaluations, da -da -da! which means somebody will then be asked to evaluate on the spot. So please listen carefully. My first person is somebody who's already turned off their, their camera thinking, I'm out of here. And that's Rinku. Are you available, Rinku? Oh, she is. I love Rinku. She's always available. So, Rinku, you've got the full choice. Number one to 13. 13, please. 13. Okay. I hope you know this joke. Why did the chicken cross the road? You have two minutes. Topic master and Tadia and fellow Toastmasters, a very good evening, warm good evening. Why did the chicken cross the road? I'm not sure about that, but I can relate something to it that why did I get married and lost my single hood jokes apart there are a lot more story to tell however uh, now i'm feeling a little overwhelming because just now i came up i just now i finished my other meeting and just got to know my speaker has been changed uh, the project object has been changed and now and I was just concentrating on my evaluation and I was being caught. So now one thing is coming in my mind that why am I being caught to talk on a table topic in prompt session? Uh, 
what to say about the main topic. I really, I really can't concentrate. Antonia, sorry, I'm not going to disappoint you. Oh, I crossed green line. So I'm eligible already. So back to you, Antonia. Sorry, okay. being, sorry being spoil sport. Thank you, Rinke. We understand perfectly. Your screen, your camera was off because you're writing your evaluation. Raj. Raj. Oh, but in any case, I am still going to ask somebody to evaluate, and that will be Julian. Rinku, 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 how tough life can be. Am I right? You started greeting everyone. That's good to gain some seconds to help that brain to think a proper answer. And I thought that you got the answer there when you were talking about your marriage. Now, we are going to know everything about Rinku's marital problems. But no, she walked away. And you were not convincing. I think that you should have explored that marital strife at home and we will have love at all. And yes, we will have understood why the chicken crossed the road. Cheers. Thank you. I should have said, but Julian knows this, shotgun evaluations are one minute or no more. That's the green light. Okay, my next- What? What? Yes. Oh. Yes, they are. Shotgun evaluations are one minute. Nope. Okay, the next speaker tonight will be Toastmaster Christian. We haven't heard enough from him. So, number one to 12. 12. 12, all right. Why is the sky blue? Why should it not be blue? Why, what color do we expect the sky to be? Red or orange? Orange would be nice. Anyway, uh, sci science tells us that the sky is blue because it's the light reflecting from the ocean onto the sky. But then water is colorless. So why is the sky blue? Maybe because of pollution? Maybe because of greenhouse effect? I don't know. I should care, but right now my mind is something more important. You, my fellow Toastmasters, you, my dear guest, instead of asking ourselves, why is the sky blue? The question we should ask ourselves are the following. Have I signed up for the Toastmasters International Convention? If I have, what am I looking to get out of it? Have I joined Digital Communicators as a guest if this is my second visit? If not, what am I waiting for? If I am a member and I know my why, why am I waiting for my treasurer to send me an email and ask me to renew, 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 renew? Why don't I just send the money? It's not like I have loads of it, but send the money, be proactive because, hey, I believe just like me, everyone here, just by being here, you know your why. You know why you're here. You know what you're going to get out of digital communicators. You know what's in it for you. So answer those questions. Take the right answer, take the right decision. I'm sure you'll make the right choice. Why is the sky blue? I still have to figure out. My friend Google may help me. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, Christian. The Google search gave an answer. Well, it does cry a lot. There's actually a scientific reason. So to evaluate, I'd like to ask Pamela, please. One minute. One minute. Why is the sky blue? And why is Christian doing a switcheroo on a switcheroo on a switcheroo? Okay, so Christian was thinking about Toastmastery were Toastmaster of the day things and he was caught off guard. So what he did really well is he stretched the question. He said it slowly. And then he started saying things that came up in his mind. So he made it very esoteric, if you will. Why is the sky blue? He turned it to the convention. He turned it to his treasurer. And then he turned it to the why. So he is our philosopher of the day. Why, why, why? Very good, Christian. When you have a lot of things on your mind, turn it around. In fact, do three or four switcheroos and no one will know that you were not prepared for the impromptu. Back to you, Toastmaster 
Table topic, master. Very good, Pamela. Yes, you will have noticed all the questions start with why. And in fact, in coaching, we're told never to ask questions with why because they're confrontational. But hey, we're digital communicators. We can go with it, can't we? So my next speaker tonight will be Yanis. So to choose a number between one and 11. Seven. Seven. Oh, this one has a why, but it's at the end. If aliens landed on Earth tomorrow and offered to take you home with them, why would you go? And remember that the word of the day is breakthrough. Um, I'm a great fan of sci-fi movies. And also I have read a book that really made me wonder what's behind the blue skies and I do not expect to find a scientific breakthrough to, to my answers, though. Uh, what I really expect to, to see when I meet aliens is if they know the answers to existential questions, like, why are we here? Like, why Timekeeper has these bills and not something else? Or why uh, they haven't contacted us for so many centuries. I don't know, I have a purpose here on earth. So I'm not sure that I will be ready to depart. Nevertheless, I will try to contact and communicate with them following maybe the way that I saw in the movie, The Arrival with the um, circles through time and space. If I didn't manage to do that, well, I'll do my best. And who knows, fate permitting, I trust my fate and I'll see how, where this journey might end up with the aliens. Back to you. Thank you, Giannis. And for an evaluation, Mehu, please. One minute. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, so table topics is all about actually filling that one minute or two minutes of the old silence and very well done, uh, uh, Yanis. Uh, because the question was to invent the idea, why would you go? And you were successfully, you turned into why you wouldn't go. So that was wonderful. And, and uh, uh, you also kind of uh, avoided to give the answer and table topics. One of the mistake what we always do is to answer the question. Table topics is not to just answer the question, it's a mini speech. And if we can, if we can, we should derive a speech out of that with a structure of opening the middle and the conclusion. Uh, often we see that people start straight going to the answer like question answer session. And uh, I think you, you break away a little bit from there. Uh, you tried to answer in the beginning, but then you thought that, okay, yeah, whether I'm going in the right direction or not. So you <laughs> twisted it over there. But only thing I can suggest is uh, next time, if you can think of a story, it will be great. Thank you, Mehu. Next question. Amy, would you like to answer a, a table topic? Yes, thank you. Good. So one to six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Number one. Why is it that the people we love are so good at pushing our buttons? <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, Madam Table Topics Master and fellow Toastmasters and guests. Why is it that the people we love are so good at pushing the, our buttons, if I understood that correctly? That's a very, very interesting question because that takes me into the deep realms of psychology and familiar behavior. Not that I am a psychologist, of course, I'm an economist by profession, so I wouldn't know that much about pushing buttons uh, and the familiarity from that perspective. But of course, we 
We all experience that in all our lives and every day. So asking why is very interesting. I do know how. Uh, I could very, very uh, easily answer how people push the buttons. I mean, you know, my, for example, my, my uh, older son is extremely good at asking me for uh, commercial money favors when I'm in a good mood and watching my favorite TV serial. He knows exactly when to push the button, say, mom, can I have 20 pounds, please? I'm going out with my friends. And I know that it's an easy answer for me. So I know how that happens, but why does it happen is, is, is a very interesting question. I think it probably happens because um, there is, there, well, no. it happens for a couple of reasons, I think. I think it happens because people feel comfortable and familiar with each other after having got to know each other so well. And it doesn't have to be, uh, uh, a sibling or a blood relation, it could be a friend. Um, and there's a, there's a sense of jubilance. I think there's a sense of victory in some ways that they feel aha, the aha moment. I really know this person well, because when I pressed that button and I got that money off her, it worked. Mm -hmm. So it's like there, there's a kind of a victory element to it, but for the person it's happened to as well, it's potentially adds to one more experience of coming closer so it's one more memory you've built together in that relationship where you can go back and say, you did that to me, you remember, you know? And so it, it's, it's building a closeness um, and, and a kind of um, familiarity over time. And I think that's why it's part of human nature. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Amy. Now the person who most responded to that question, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name is, Aju, 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 could you evaluate, please? Aju, Aju, Sonia, thank you. Uh, so, well, that was a very difficult question, and uh, Amy, you rep replied perfectly. So, why people we love are so good to push the buttons? So, well. Why? It's, yeah, I mean, it's so easy to, to say how, but yeah, why they do it. Maybe, yes, as you said, it's because, yeah, it's our nature. You did a great uh, speech. Uh, you looked at the camera and uh, yes, you replied perfectly to the question. And yeah, well done. <laughs> Back to you, table topics today. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have time for any more? Somebody tell me. I can't hear you, Jack. I can see a clock. I'm doing six things at one time here, honestly. No, it's, you're down to finish at 7.26. Oh, I know. If that's I know. okay. Okay, all right, that's it. You get no more questions. But well done, everybody. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Is she not fantastic with her mind-boggling question, why? I'll never forget why the sky is blue. So, for the benefit of everyone, Toastmaster Antuna Harris joined Digital Communicators because she got intrigued by the concept of digital training, which was introduced to her by Nick Lacani. And she enjoys the international mix of members who bring many skills to create interesting meetings of a high standard. Thank you to us, Master Antonio. Thank you for being here and for being our Table Topics Master. Before moving forward, let's hear from our timekeeper, Dec Klusky. Yeah. How did our okay. Table Topics speakers fare? Uh, Over to you. Yeah, well, Rinku Saha was a uh, time of two minutes allowed, did one minute ten. The evaluator Julian, he was allowed a minute, and there was a mix up with him. I had, a, I had it all under control, but I was told I, I hadn't. Uh, so that was one minute allowed, 35 seconds he did. Speaker Christian, uh, one minute 42 of an allow, allowed time of two minutes. Pamela was allowed one minute to evaluate, she did exactly. 59 seconds, brilliant. Yanis Cornus was allowed two minutes to speak and did it in one minute, 30 seconds. Meho, 
two minutes and uh, two minutes and 10 seconds. I think I've missed out somebody here. Amy Koteka, two minutes allowed, two minutes, 21 seconds. And you, Akentor, was allowed uh, one minute to evaluate and did it in 36 seconds. So that is my timing, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. Timekeeper. And so happy we didn't see or hear the famed bells. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> we didn't. All right. Now, I don't know about you, but what's coming up next is one of my favorite moments of Toastmasters. It's this one. Feedback moment. And what's, what we're going to hear now is the feedback from free of our evaluators. So without further ado, let's welcome evaluator number one who great, graciously accepted at the last minute to evaluate the speech of Toastmaster Meho, Toastmaster Prince. Over to you, sir. Let me tell you that I shall be following the structure of our evaluation form. So I shall tell you how Mehul excelled, what could have made this icebreaker even better in my humble opinion, and how I suggest Mehul to challenge himself. Your speech title hinted towards what you were going to let us into. Your path, persuasive influence, hinted that I might be persuaded or influenced by you. That said, my dear Mayol, your descriptive language, the clarity of your voice, your confidence, your poise, the simplicity of your language, the progress of your speech, it was chronological in your numerous sources of inspiration who led you to breakthroughs which have, over the course of time, become the most salient milestones of your 56 year old journey so we know that you started your journey in Jonagar, gujarat india and had a 22 year long, year long layover in netherlands with a minor episode across the pond and how you got to the uk this is genuinely impressive impressive during the course of your speech as you took us from Jonagar to amsterdam to states and back to amsterdam and on to utrecht I got a little lost. Just like your life, your travels have been diverse. And although there are salient milestones, I got a little mixed up, just a wee bit. I suggest you use the space available to you. And although the frame is restricted in length and breadth, the depth, there is a lot of depth, just like you, Mehul, I challenge you, which is not exactly a challenge, knowing that you are already an advanced communicator and an advanced leader but because you have returned to the yoke. Let me welcome you with an easy challenge in that you use your acquired knowledge in speech five of the competent communicator manual and let your body speak with which you enhance your voice, your confidence, your poise, your content, and so much more. Let us be surprised the next time you take the stage mail and I look forward to that opportunity. Thank you ever so much for this speech. Thank you, Toastmaster Prince, for this succinct evaluation. Now, the next evaluator has been listening. He's been writing. He's been preparing. So let's welcome him, Toastmaster Vincent, for his evaluation on the speech of Toastmaster Audrey. Over to you, sir. Audrey. The PR project, I mean, we're all involved with public relation and selling ourselves or selling our clubs. So this is something exciting just by its title, it, it, it's attractive. And then level five, not level one, not level two, not three, not four, but five. Boy, that is what is certainly a breakthrough. You are reaching the sky and you're using digital tools. You said you wanted to learn digital tools. And there I could see you with Prezi video um, and slides popping up to allow your presentation to have a deeper impact. So thank you very much to take me onto your PR journey. But I also like that you told us in the beginning 
what we are going to hear. You mentioned two parts and you used your fingers to, and then you told us what we are going to hear, which I also much enjoy because then I know where to listen and what to, where to follow and not to get lost. I would like to follow Prince's suggestion, body language. We transmit so much of our energy, so much of our speeches through body language. Obviously, Zoom and um, digital communication are often complicated and they don't allow you. But I saw that I saw you sitting there reading. And certainly there was very little eye contact. And usually there was a lack of smile. And again, I think smiles are something which connect to your audience. And therefore, perhaps in your next speech, try to uh, memorize your speech, try to deliver it with, with less, but just perhaps bullet points rather than uh, reading. And smile, Part particularly if you wear your glasses, sometimes you won't, can't even see your glasses. I liked your use of language, uh, your, your memberships being um, dormant, which I thought was a lovely word, huh? or I can't read my own writing now. And what I also enjoyed was the fact that you that you had your speech very well structured. There was a there were good transitions. I could understand how it was structured. I'd like these questions about are you a leader or are you a follower? Because that was a great opening question. That it was something which really followed your title and I thought that was very intriguing. What I liked was some sort of a, an ending. There was just, it just stopped. You just, you just turned off the radio. Perhaps next time work a little bit on your, on your ending. So my suggestions are keep on going level five, level six, level seven, to keep a bit more eye contact and I'm looking forward to your next speech. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Vincent, for your valuable feedback. I'm sure the speaker will take nuggets away from this and improve on the next speech. Now, the next evaluator shared with me her why she joined Digital Communicators. It's because she believes this club has a lot to offer to its members. Do you believe that this club has a lot to offer to its members? Give me a big thumbs up in the in the visual, yes? Yeah, okay, I see the thumbs coming up slowly but surely. So Rinku Saha is so grateful that members here are allowing her to grow in terms of her personal and professional goals. So please welcome Toastmaster Rinku for her evaluation on the speech of Toastmaster Oji. Over to you, madam. Thank you. One breakthrough is all it will take to change the world. Perhaps I would say one profound and inspiring speech like OG can win audience heart and minds. General evaluator, fellow Toastmasters guest and OG in particular. Today I'm going to evaluate, I'm going to evaluate OG's speech on the basis of two points. First is points to praise, where she already shines and excel. And second, points to ponder the area of improvement. Let me start with points to praise. What stood out the most in your speech was the content, the personal story you have connected with your audience. Second, how you narrated and exhibited your message and the story at so is it added credibility and you were so calm and composed and smoothly talking it was like your speech was talking to us you gave life to your story by asking a rhetorical question 10 million dollar or would you like to wake up in the morning and you also gave a great message to your audience to your listener that material things is nothing. 
you are blessed we are grateful we are awake and we wake up every morning now coming to points to ponder area of improvement how we can improve this speech facial expression og when you talk about sadness when you talk about death your facial expression if i were you when my friend passed away facial expression vocal variety vocal variety to express your feeling feelings how grateful you are uh, that gratefulness in your voice i would i would prefer uh, if a speaker delivers speech in a standing position so that i would be able to see her or his body language the spreading of hands showing more gesture rhetorical question needs to be for I mean rhetorical question followed by a pregnant pause is it's like a ice on the cake like when you ask 10 million dollar or would you like to wake up in the morning pause so that we can get connected with you in summation you also use twice the word of the day bingo kudos in summation you are an inspirational speaker great storyteller you connected your audience with your personal stories and you gave a great message to take away that material material things is nothing we should be grateful that we are alive and live for the moment i challenge you with one small request to deliver a humorous speech back to you krishan and she missed the bell thank you to smoster rinku for this thorough evaluation i believe your speaker got quite a bit away and um, I just want to confirm with our host if we are going to have breakout rooms open at the end of the meeting for the speakers. Awesome. So evaluators, do consider joining your assigned speakers in the individual breakout rooms if you have more feedback to share. And anyone else in the room, you're more than welcome to join them as well. On this note, I'm going to move on to the next session. And I'm so happy I'm not the one leading it. I'm going to hand over for the open feedback segment, which is going to run for a maximum of 10 minutes to none other than Pamela Benjamin. Madam Toastmaster, over yeah. to you. Okay. And enjoy. Good afternoon, digital communicators. We just heard three incredible, incredible evaluations. But you might be saying, hmm, I think I could add this. I think I could add this. What about this part? So tell me, Mr. Timekeeper, set the clock for 90 seconds, and we're going to hear what the, me the members and the guests think they can add to our first speaker, Mahu. What can you help? What can you add to his evaluation that will help him break through to the next level of speaking? One, two, three, go. Julian. I would say, Mehul, that it's been a delight to hear to you. What a voice. And that's the only thing I will say. What a voice. Keep it. Silky voice that connected with us at all moments. Thanks. Another input. Colette. Rahul, I really loved your speech. And what stood out for me as well was you didn't use any filler words. If you did, it was just one or two. I mean, that is just amazing because it's a while since you've given a speech being at Toastmasters, so very well done. There were probably three or four speeches in that. Absolutely fantastic. You have loads to work with. Congratulations. Thank you, Colette. Another, another person with input. One, two, three. Shall I call on someone? Christian, what can our friend Mahu use to get him to the next level? Why me? Um, I believe just having one story. Uh, I understand the, uh, your evaluator mentioned that as well. It was just, you know, all over the place. One personal story because you have so much to share. And just expand on it. 
put me in there. Show me what's happening. Uh, what does it feel like to be in a specific place? What does it smell like? What does it look like? Uh, evoke my senses. And I think you're just going to be a stall if you do that. Back to you. Pamela. Thank you. I asked you because you're the master evaluator. Our guest, Inju, did I say it correctly? You can correct me and you can give some tips. Yeah, it's usual. It's a small tip. Yeah, maybe next time you can use a background like the one uh, Christian is using to share, for example, the link of uh, your pro your nonprofit organizations or, you know, so yeah, useful information about your speech. Thank you. Thank you. I have a tip. You started with the story of a little boy and he was had, and he was very, very poor and he had a hard time. I can't remember something with his legs. And then you transitioned to other parts of your life. And then it always brought you back to those childhood memories. I would have liked a little bit more story of that little boy, if he's going to be your anchor. And then as you go further into your life, reference him back directly and then and then go back to your life about how he impacted you. Mr. Timer, how am I doing? I don't hear the bells and I don't see a green. I have never worked so hard in my life. I've got about seven things going at the one time, but you're doing fine. They're very short. They're supposed to be 90 very seconds. Short. And they're coming in at about 10, 20 seconds each. So I would, okay. I would ask everybody, just lengthen out a little bit. Ease out a little bit, please. Jack, we're going to pay you two to three times as much as we usually pay the timer. So really good job. Our next speaker is Audrey Sin. Sing, Audrey Sing. Does anyone have any tips for her? She worked on her club's website and leadership and working with collaborative versus telling people what to do so everyone wouldn't run away. Any tips, Mar? Deck, set the timer for 90 seconds and just give me a green when we once we get close to 90 seconds instead of each individual one. <laughs> no? Okay. Oh. Okay, we're the wild, wild west show. Okay, listen, Mark, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, how about I do it properly and I do a green at 60 and then you get um, a, a, a 65 a, for the six and uh, 15 seconds after that? I know what I mean. I don't know what I mean. But the green will come at 60 and the red will come at 90. Okay, we're going to pay you a lot more than two to three times your usual wage, deck. Mar. Audrey, I think that you proved, you know, that you are a digital communicator for a reason. You wanted to try Prezi video. You did it, so congratulations for that. And I think that for the first time, you did, did it successfully. So congratulations on that. Any other comments for Audrey? Follower or leader? Colette? I think that Audrey's structure was absolutely excellent. From the beginning, she said out what she wanted to do, and she delivered on that. Julian. I want to congratulate her on her delivery. It was really good, the presentation. Prezi, a couple of things. You can oh. use the Prezi from the club that won't show here the Prezi symbol, and it's more professional. And the challenge I have for you is next time we have to practice the stage craft to know where the picture is, how we move, so the picture doesn't cover our movement. Inju. Inju. Yeah, Inju. <laughs> well done, Audrey. I really liked your presentation and I took a lot of notes because I'm part of the BVPR team at Manchester Communicators, so really well done. Next time you can just, yeah, maybe a small tape share your clubs URLs so people can follow and uh, see what are you doing the great job you know the great work you are doing on uh, yeah, the social media so yeah thank you Guinness did you have something to say I saw your hand go up then it went down so I don't know if someone stole your idea or if you just your arm got tired no no something very quick for Andre uh, the structure was clear, but so that was obvious. But what uh, I was expecting was 
more elaborate more on the leadership traits that she used. Well, she mentioned all the tasks of the project, which was exceptional, but I didn't see all the traits that a leader has, how she incorporate all these traits into the project and into her own journey through this path. Back to you. Okay, thank you. Any more tips? for Audrey to get her to break through to the next level. I really liked how she talked about working with Toastmaster teams on her, in her spare time and that you have to be collaborative. You can't tell people what to do, but you have to have strong leadership and you have to get things done. So if you're a little too strong, they run away. And if you don't give enough direction, they run away. Excellent tips, Audrey. Excellent tips for working with Toastmasters on a bigger project for your club. Now I am going to move to our third speaker, Ogala. Ogala, tell me if I spelled, said it wrong. And I, did I say it correctly? Ogali. 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 You, you can just call me OG. OG, that would be yeah. easier, OG. Okay, she had an intense moving speech. We were all, stunned. How can she get to the next level? Or what did you really like? What was your favorite part of OG? Julian. Poses, powerful pregnant poses, masterful. Christian. The emotions. She emotes like the combination of voice, visual, like she didn't move it. And the words, awesome. What I saw, I saw old OG was fishing and she was reeling us in. She threw out that line and she was slow. And we were getting pulled in deeper and deeper. And I see that clock, Mr. Deck. We were pulled deeper and deeper into that story. And I really, really loved it. Everybody was just in awe. So incredible. I can't think of what to help you get through to the next level, but your pauses and your drama and your transparency was moving and intense. Kudos, and there is my bell. Back to the Toastmaster of the day or the general evaluator of the day, whoever it may be. Thank you, Toastmaster Pamela. And you can whew, take a breather now. It was powerful, thank you so much. And yes, reminder, please join the speakers in their breakout rooms after we close the meeting. Now, our general evaluator tells us, and it's her coming up next, it's a lady. When I asked her, why did you join Digital Communicators? And she tells me back, why not? I am a member because number one, it's unique. Advanced Club run as a TV show. Number two, it is besides public speaking and leadership skills, allowing her to foster digital skills. And number three, it allows her and the other members to collaborate in high performance teams. So please, Welcome our general evaluator of this session, Mark Cano. To us, Master Mark, over to you. This is Mark Cano, all the way from Barcelona today, giving my report as a general evaluator of this meeting. Successful meetings that digital communicators involve thoughtful and careful preparation. As today's greeter, Colette Engsko, welcome members and guests, and I'm sure that she did with a great smile. As for the meeting official opening, today's producer, DTM Julian Cereceda, has been behind the scenes and is still ready to join and shotgun evaluations. Good job. The presiding officer, Colette Einskov, was ready to open the show and almost on time. And the Toastmaster of the day, Christian Ranchern, was properly introduced, of course. Almost all the roles were filled prior to the meeting, but still there were some adjustments that had to be done. Even if Christian shared the agenda at the very start of the meeting, she, he also told us how we needed to be flexible and adapt with the new roles as some of the members just couldn't make it today. Finally, Christian, Thank you and congratulations for your previous preparation. That theme of the day, your why, and that video you shared, and 
many of the things that you have been doing through the whole session. Our topic uh, master today, Antonia Harris. Uh, Antonia, thank you very much you know, to um, share and to tell us about the dynamics of the shotgun evaluation, the specific of this slide. The topic selected matched the theme of the day, of course, the whys. Why is the sky blue? And one suggestion, be mindful though who you call on. If they have a role, it might be a bit tricky for them to perform properly. Our timer, Dec Classkin, stated the functioning of this role very clearly, using both visual and audio signals. Good job for that. Just make sure we know exactly what time periods and when to show the cards prior to the meeting rather than what? in or during the meeting. He was straight to the point though to tell us, you know, uh, when to deliver. He delivered uh, the time reports. Our grammarian, Colette, we haven't heard her voice yet. So I guess that her report will come in a moment. As for our three speech evaluators, First, our guest Toastmaster Prince, thanks for taking the role to give feedback on Mehul's speech. Let us be surprised. Let your body speak. And this has been actually a recurrent theme over our evaluations. Toastmaster Vincent, thank you for remarking Audrey's use of digital tools, Prezi as a digital communicator. And you also mentioned body language, eye contact, and a smile. Finally, Toastmaster Rinku, what a powerful quote to start to evaluate OG's speech, pocket speech. The one breakthrough can change the wall or is necessary to change the wall. That was a very powerful quote to begin in it. And you also mentioned the exploration of fashion facial expressions. So today, gestures have been at a stay. Coming to an end with unique roles at digital communicators like the open feedback, DTM Pamela Benjamin, thank you very much for opening the opportunities for everyone, everybody in the room, Toastmaster fellows and guests to participate and to get involved in this evaluation and you even also included your own food for thought there. As for the general evaluator, yeah, Mark Hanna, well, I could tell a few things about her, but still, I would like to ask you all to share your evaluation on her role today in the chat. Commendations, recommendations are always welcome for any member of any club. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, Overall, I do hope today's meeting at Digital Communicators helped find your breakthrough in your why. Keep attending our meetings. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day, Christian. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. I have no idea how the hell did she put up so much in such a short time? Oh my God, why is she not getting paid for this? Anyway, um, I have to news which are not so happy number one i forgot about my grammarian so please join me to welcome back on stage for her grammarian report toastmaster colette over to you madam thank you toastmaster of the day fellow toastmasters and guests well the word of the day breakthrough was very successful vincent mehul antonia yanis rinku all used it once og used it four times Pamela B used it twice and Mar used it twice. So overall, it was 13 times it was used. I'm delighted with that. But to be honest, I must say this, we could have had Nick Lacani's name as the word of the day because his name cropped up throughout the whole meeting. Absolutely fantastic. What I particularly liked was one opening of a speech that just grabbed me these words. Soft rays of the morning sun fell. That was by Mahul, absolutely powerful. There were absolutely amazing words used. The likes of waiting eagerly. Christian also talked about breaking the ice, talking about 
starting off your delivery of a speech and he used your why throughout the whole meeting. There was the phrase learn by doing. There was the world is crumbling. OG talked about losing a friend, feeling empty. And then there were a couple of uh, slang words which I found very enjoyable. There was switcheroos. I hadn't heard that now. And OG talked about a tad. Yanis talked about scientific answers and existential questions. Well, there was one word which I never heard before, and it was esoteric, esoteric, and that was by Pamela B. Overall, absolutely fantastic. There is one little tip I want to give you before we finish off. There's a Twitter account called for English Grammar, and the address of it is at Grammar Updates. There is absolutely fantastic tips on that in using grammar. And for people who have different languages, it will help you with your tenses. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Madam Grammarian. Thank you so much for such a thorough report. And just to add to the people who use the word of the day, this session has been a breakthrough for me because I really pushed myself to try to deliver and yes, I failed. Yes, I tripped. Yes, I messed up. But hey, you were there. You supported me and thank you, everyone. Oh, I did mention there's a second not so happy news. And here it is. We've been seeking a live reporter. Now, we didn't have one. I did mention that there was going to be a freebie. Here's what the live reporter missed out. It was a 97 US dollar course. That's what you missed out on because I'm re releasing my courses in October. And that was going to be one giveaway for you. But hey, you never know what's the next one's coming up. Having said that, thank you for being here. Role players, speakers, evaluators, thank you so much for making this session of Digital Communicators a fabulous one. I'll end by saying the following, by sharing the following with you. Definiteness of purpose is the starting point of all achievement. W. Clement Stone knew what he was doing and thinking when he shared that to the world. So my question to you is, what is your purpose? What is your why? If you found it, great. If you haven't found it, wish you all the best to find it before the end of this year. On this note, enjoy the convention that's ring right now. And I'm going to hand over to our presiding officer for business segment and the close of the meeting. VP Education Colette, over to you, madam. Thank you very much, Christian, distinguished Toastmaster. You did an absolutely wonderful job. I would like to thank our guests who joined us this evening. We had Yanis, we had Iju, we had Amy, let me see, we had our area director, Howard, and we had Prince. So you are all very welcome. Just to finish up, we have our joint meeting with Manchester Communicators on the 30th of August. On the 13th of September, our table topics and humor speech contest. On the 27th of September, our charter party. Look forward to seeing you then and get well soon, Nicola Khani. Bye bye. Now, breakout rooms are open. If you want to join to any specific speaker, go and join that breakout room. Oh, if I would like to talk about the charter party with the members. Where do they go? Uh, Julian, do we stop the recording? Yes, now we do it. Yeah. Well, let's.